Let's get back to airplane antennas. The other day, while conducting an instrument check ride, I was observing the student conducting the pre-flight and noticed he never even took a look at the antennas. When he was done, I proceeded to ask him if the airplane was okay and he answered yes. So I brought him to the ALT antenna and asked him what this antenna was for. At that point, he realized it was sheared off and proceeded to tell me that we could not proceed with the flight because we would have no radios. I went ahead and asked him questions on some other antennas, only to realize that the only antenna he could correctly identify was the GPS antenna. Needless to say, we did not proceed with the check ride, and the student will need some remedial training before reconvening with me for a second attempt. So, let's take a look at the purpose of these antennas, and how to correctly pre-flight the airplane, making sure these antennas will actually work during the flight. Once you're done with all the planning, the next step is to make sure that the aircraft is ready for the IFR flight we intend to accomplish. We need to start from the maintenance logs and make sure that the airplane is indeed airworthy. So, check the annual inspection and the 100 hour inspection if the airplane is rented, but that's not it. We need to make sure that the altimeter, pedostatic system and transponder have their 24 condor month inspections accomplished. This is not only for obvious legal reasons, but also for your own safety. The reasons for the altimeter and pedostatic checks are fairly obvious. I mean, the altimeter is definitely the most important instrument of all when flying inside the clouds, as you always want to make sure that you are higher than the highest obstacle. A defective altimeter could clearly end the flight in disaster. The transponder is just as important, as that is how ATC knows your location and keeps you away from any obstacles and especially other traffic since you can't see it. A defective transponder which gives ATC an erroneous reading is just as dangerous as a bad altimeter in the IFR environment. Once we have determined that the airplane is airworthy on the books, it's time to go and visually inspect it. There really aren't many differences between a VFR pre-flight inspection and an IFR one, but one thing I have always seen many students neglect on pre-flights is checking the antennas. Some antennas are not that strong, and especially in winter, could shear off because of ice. I myself have found a missing ELT antenna a few times. So, let's take a look at them and see what we should check for. We will proceed in order of importance. First, the comm antennas, generally located on top of the cabin. Make sure they are not sheared and not excessively dirty or rusty. On the tail of your plane are where the VR whiskers will be the most important navigational antennas for IFR flying. They usually also include the glide slope antenna inside their assembly. If not, you might also find this other antenna, the glide slope stand alone. It's either on the belly of the airplane, but could also be inside the engine, and at that point you would probably not be able to see it. You want to make sure these antennas are of equal length, and not, again, excessively dirty or rusted. Next is your GPS antenna, which is nearly always located on the roof of the cabin. Again, make sure it's not covered by anything, and it's not painted over. A lot of them actually tell you on. No paint. You never know. If the airplane has been recently painted, make sure they didn't paint over the GPS antenna. Next is the ELT antenna. This is the one that's most likely to break as it's very thin. It's usually located on the fuselage. Same inspections as the other antennas, with again special attention to its tip to make sure it's smooth, indicating it hasn't sheared. The DME and transponder antennas will be located on the belly of the airplane and look like fins. Same inspections as the other ones. Finally, if you're flying in a mountainous area or outside the US, you might still have to deal with ADFs, automatic direction finders. There might be one or two antennas associated with the ADF, the sense antenna and the loop antenna, but these days most of them are combined into one unit. Again, same inspections, no rust and not excessively dirty. The rest of the pre-flight should be no different from a VFR pre-flight, but I usually spend a little more time making sure the pitot tube and static ports are unobstructed or covered by some kind of protection. Even airliners have come down because when they wash the airplane they forgot to take the tape off of these, so again, visually inspect them. But if you find that there is an obstruction such as a bug inside the opening, have a mechanic clear it. Do not attempt to do it yourself, you could damage it easily. So, the next time you pre-flight the airplane, make sure to include the airplane's antennas. 
and try to make this a routine. You don't absolutely need to know every single one in your airplane to pass a check ride, but at least avoid telling the examiner that the ELT antenna is the one you would use to communicate to ATC with, if you know what I mean. Again, if you would like for us to create a video to better explain some aviation concept which you find difficult, leave us a comment, send us a message, or email us at pts at pilottrainingsolutions.com and we will do our best to clear any doubts you may have with another video. Till next time, we at PassFAExams.com wish you all happy flying and blue skies.